Welcome back, geology fans, to the top of Red Rocks Park. It is time to tear you away from the great unconformity outcrop and reboard the bus, knowing these beds are tilted, but not overturned, and knowing how to decipher the language of the rocks around you, your bus becomes a time machine that has transported you 1.7 billion years into the past. As we drive out of the top parking lot, we jump the great non-conformity to see our 300 million year basal conglomerate sitting on 1.7 billion year Idaho Springs Nice. Looking out the front window as we approach the tunnel, we notice beds which break lateral continuity. Tracing the eroded surfaces, we see it is a broad U-shaped cut with a flat top. The U-shaped bottom and flat top suggest this is a stream channel, and the broad nature indicates a wide but shallow stream. This is typical of fluvial or river systems that have more sediment input than they can carry. Uh, streams that get choked up with sediment like that, get, they tend to break apart into braided streams, with each individual channel being shallow and wide to maximize friction with the sediment to move it along. Braided streams and alluvial fans go together like bacon and just about anything else. If you're a vegetarian, you're just going to have to trust me on that one. So we have yet more confirming evidence for our interpretation of alluvial fans forming a bajada. As our bus passes through the tunnel and continues down and to the east, we are traveling forward in time towards the present. Darker layers in the fountain formation are finer grain sandstones to silts deposited at low flow, and the isolated dark masses included in the coarser grained, lighter colored material are rip up clasts from high energy flow events ripping chunks of coherent fine grained sedimentary blocks out of the bed of the stream and then mixing those into the resultant deposit. But further east towards the present that we go, the finer grain the sediments become, indicating the energy of the environment is decreasing with time. And this makes sense, as once the ancestral Rockies form, erosional forces begin to take them down again. Their flanks start as high-energy environments of deposition and transition to lower-energy deposition as the wearing down of the mountains continues. This drive takes us from the very end of the Pennsylvanian period to the beginning of the Permian period of the Paleozoic era. As mentioned previously, the oxygen levels were high because the carbon had been taken out in the previous Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods, known as the Carboniferous in the rest of the world. A tree only releases oxygen while it's alive. And once dead, if it decays or burns, it will consume that oxygen back again, releasing its carbon back into the atmosphere. To keep the oxygen in the atmosphere, you have to bury the organic material and keep it from reacting with the O2. One result of lowering the carbon, as CO2, in the atmosphere was that the rocks we are now driving through were experiencing an ice house, with ice covering both poles of the planet. The glaciers from this ice age helped to wear down the ancestral Rockies in quick time so that by the time our bus brings us to our next stop, the energy of the environment is much lower. The planet is also starting to melt again, causing global seas to rise, and contemporaneously in Kansas, we are beginning to see limestone as the sea transgresses from our east. Stop 2 has three formations to see, and we will, of course, start with the most western formation, as it will be the oldest. Site 2A is the Lions Formation. When we step back to get the big picture, we see a resistant ridge indicating another tilted layer striking the surface. The road cut confirms tilted beds still dipping to the east, so these beds should not be overturned. Standing at a distance, one of the most striking features in the cut are large crossbed sets. This evidence leads us to think sedimentary, and that it may be a sandstone from the overall appearance. We have noted sandstones being resistant ridges on the drive-in as well. So now it's time to get up close and personal with a rock, and the high porosity as it soaks up liquids, and the visible pieces of sand and the sandpaper texture all confirm this is sandstone and there's a sign here. There are some coarse layers indicating higher energy flow, but 
The large crossbed layers in this formation all have very uniform, medium-defined sand. The well-sorted, smaller size of grains and size of crossbed sets let us know that this was not formed by ripples in water. This was formed by wind-blown sands making dunes on land, occasionally punctuated by water flow events. Wind-blown deposits are called aeolian deposits, and stream deposits are alluvial deposits. At other locations, the Lyon sandstone is more tabular and so is used for construction rock in our area. This tabular sandstone is characteristic of coastal plains drained by broad river systems. So these dunes before us make the most sense as aeolian beach dunes. For the first time, we see that our area has beachfront property. Ash layers in the Lyon sandstone give us a date of about 270 million years ago, putting this outcrop deep in the middle of the Permian period at the end of the Paleozoic era. The full age range for the Lyons formation starts at about 286 million years ago and goes to about 260 million years ago. For our chart, this is 2A, the Lyons Formation. The minerals, as one might expect with a mature sandstone at the beach, are quartz grains, with a cement contribution from hematite letting us know we're still oxygenated and getting iron from some land sources. The grains range in size from about a half a millimeter to a millimeter in the Aeolian sands and up to half a centimeter in the coarse flow material. At 280 million years old, this area was a beach. And so the events that this rock records are the wearing down of the ancestral Rockies and a transgression of the sea. The low area just east of the outcrop has finer grain materials indicating an even lower energy environment, possibly offshore. But seas don't smoothly transgress and regress, so we'll keep an open mind as we approach our next outcrop to the east.